Ian, I, I gotta ask. I think you were victorious about two hours ago. What's what, what's been going on between then and now? <laughs> the people love me. I can't. I just everyone wants a piece of me. And do you know what? They should. I'm the future. I am the future of this sport. And everyone's trying to get interviews. And do you know what? I just need some time to just relax and just enjoy everything. It's overwhelming, man. It's it's insane. Like I'm a 23 year old who just made my UFC debut at MSG, the biggest card of the year, knock someone out, and I'm just, yeah, I couldn't be happier. Yeah. I mean, I know, like, you, you dreamed it and you've envisioned this, and, but, I mean, the actual experience itself, I mean, what, what is the fear right now to go in and do everything you said you were going to do? I was right. I've been right since day one. Once I show up, the job gets done, and it doesn't matter who's in front of me or how it happens, I'm going to win. Whether it's the first round knockout, whether it's a unanimous decision, doesn't matter. I'm a winner, I'm a competitor, and all I do is win. And they were saying, you played golf this morning, is that right? I was meant to play golf oh. this morning. I made a call, I was meant to play golf. I wanted to play golf this morning, but I made a smart decision not to for other issues that uh, were at hand. I kind of uh, got in trouble by people, but it's okay. How hard was it to talk you out of it? Who ultimately had to make that call? Me. I did. That was the hardest part about it, is that I made the decision not to, and I'm obsessed with golf. Um, but yeah, uh, it was my decision in the end. It was probably the right one. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that now. I could sit here and argue that it probably wasn't the right decision, because golf is never a bad, a bad experience. I love golf, and yeah, it would have been a nice day to go out, shoot, some, shoot nine holes, go home, warm up, get a massage, and then go out and knock someone out in MSG. It would have been a nice day. Let me ask you, I mean, obviously you're satisfied with the result, you're satisfied with everything, mm -hmm. but the, the, the complete performance, you know, you got tested a little no, bit in there, I'm right? No, not happy. Not happy? No, I know your question, no, I'm not happy. Yeah. yeah. I can see where it's going. No. Obviously I'm happy with the, with the knockout, I mean, why, why wouldn't I be? But I was a bit gun-shy at the start, and that, I've never experienced that in my life, and it, it was just, I was a bit overwhelmed, and I'm not going to sit here and lie, I'm, not, I'm an open book, I, I tell people the truth. Um, I felt a bit gun-shy. Um, normally, I'd, I'd try, uh, what was it, probably about 40, 50 seconds before I'd try on a punch. Normally, I'm about 18 jabs in at that point. Um, yeah, I just felt a bit gun shy, a bit overwhelmed by the whole experience, to be honest. But at the end of the day, he got knocked out. I got my first round knockout. I'm 8 0. I'm 1 0 in the UFC, and the hype is real. Do you know what I mean? I've been saying it since day one. I am the future of this sport, I am inevitable. And, I just proved it again tonight. You know, obviously, with obviously the performance, of course, but the <laughs> brash talk as well, there's going to be a lot of attention. There's going to be a lot of people, you know, putting a target on your back. I mean, do you welcome that? I mean, do you welcome the, the animosity from others and, and people calling you out? <sighs> Typing shit online isn't calling someone out. Sending a tweet out, putting someone up on Instagram isn't, isn't, isn't how we do this. You want some of this, get on to Dana. Get on to Sean Shelby, get on to Mick Maynard. Don't talk some shit online, I'm game, I'll say yes. I'm a, I'm a competitor, you think you're better than me? Let's see. But don't chat some shit online and go, anyone who chats shit online is gonna root it out. I'm like, you're a coward. If you chat shit online, you're just trying to get some attention because I've got some hype and you want a bit of it. But if you're real about it, get on to the guys, make the fight, and let's do it. Welcome everyone, I welcome everyone. I'm, I'm gonna slowly, slowly, slowly pick apart this division. It's what I do. I've got a lot of time to go back to Florida and learn and, and grow with the likes of Henry Hoofs and Greg Jones and Jason Strout, all my cornermen today, they're amazing. I want a massive thank you to them. But I, I, can, I can do a lot of fucking great things with them by my side and that team behind me. So I'm just gonna take my time. Anyone who wants it, give me the date. Let's see, I wanna do next year, March, maybe March, April, May next year. I wanna give myself a lot of time to grow and learn because why not? I've just made my UFC debut. It's been absolutely insane. It's an emphatic finish. So now let's sit down, grow, and then take over. I love it. You kind of touched on there, but my last thing, I just wanna ask you, what is the, the plan from here? You know what I mean? Do you, you're saying slow, but it's also, you're like, you're welcoming all the way to the top mm -hmm. and evoking Conor McGregor, the biggest star in the history mm -hmm. of the sport. So what is the master plan for you from here? I'm young, right? I'm blessed to be in the position I am at this young age. Um, I'm 23 years of age, I turned 24 in two weeks, 11 days. Um, I don't need to rush anything. 
whatsoever. If I fight three times a year for the next 10 years, it's 30 fights in the UFC. I don't need 30 fights to be where I'm going to be, where I want to be. Like, I want to be a two-weight division champion. I want to win the welterweight title. I want to win the middleweight title. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over this game. I'm gonna show everybody why I'm what. I want, I want people to feel my energy, to believe, to believe what I say. Because every time I've said something, I've backed it up. Do you know what I mean? If I, like tonight, yes, was it the cleanest performance? No. But did I do what I said I was gonna do? Yes. So that's all that matters. I'm gonna keep doing that, and people are always gonna say, "Oh, I'd beat this guy, or I'd do this." So do it. Let's see. Give me the guy that's gonna do it. Because the only two people that I can think that are going to do it right now are probably Kamzat and Kamaru, because they're the two guys that are, are the shit at the moment. I mean, Kamaru's the champ. Kamzat's the biggest biggest prospect that, that has just got in there. And like, they're the two, like, I think Kamaru's the champ. Kamzat is going to be the champ. And then I think it's going to be me and Kamzat fighting for that belt in a couple of years. Um, potentially for both belts. I mean, he's, he fights a middleweight too. Um, but I've got a lot of time to grow, do you know what I mean? I'm only, I'm only 23 years of age, I've got a big frame to grow into. Got a lot of work to do in strength and condition, get bigger, stronger, fitter, faster, and learn a lot of skills, and that's all I'm gonna do. It's a time for me to take my time and grow, and it's a kind of a slow, fast process, if that makes sense. I wanna be active, but I wanna take it slow because I want to improve my skill set. If I fight three times a year, it's four months between every fight, I can grow a hell of a lot in four months. And if I just keep that year in, year out, year in, year out, no one's going to be able to stop me. Ian, uh, over here. Uh, we've yes, talked sir. to all the winners so far. None of them have been wearing a, like, you know, they're not dressed up. They're usually yeah, sitting well, there fight kit. Well, do you know what, dude? I'm 23 years of age making my debut at MSG. I want to enjoy this moment. I want to remember sitting back and going, that was a good debut. What did you do? I got dressed up. I had a good time. I enjoyed the moment. I'm going to go out to some pizza bar in a suit, and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to go, yeah, yeah. This isn't where I should be, but I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to do it like this. Um, they told me I wasn't allowed to take a shower. I'm like, Shh, don't tell me that. Come on, I'm going to take a shower. Went in, took a shower, got changed, took some time, done all my media, and here I am. I get it. There's this thing, the Irish charm. You tell me you can't do something, I'll end up doing it. They told me I wasn't allowed to get into the cage before the event because of COVID protocols that they'd have to clean it. I ended up getting into the cage. I've got an Irish charm. We can just do things. <laughs> it's as we get away with it. We curse, we get it. We, we curse, we get away with it. Why? I'm Irish. That's it. I'm Irish. I get away with it. Um, but yeah, do you like it? Nice. Here, do you want to see the back yeah, of it? I was about to ask. The so back of it's back. the best part. Here, look. It's got a couple words on it. Ego, obsessive, possessive, because I'm a possessive fucker over my missus. Obsessive, because I obsess over everything I do. <sighs> I showed up, because once I show up, I'll beat everybody. I'm the future, so the future's there. I'm inevitable, because everything I do is inevitable, and uncoachable, because I was called uncoachable before, which I find is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I look good. And then speaking of the, the finishing sequence, right before you did Oh, land that counter. You also kind of stunned him with like a lead front high kick. Yeah, was that, nice. Did you know that, did you see that was going to be an opening like leading into this, like watching tape mm -hmm. on Jordan all, or did you just see it in the moment? No, the, the, the KO I had planned was uppercut right hand, right high kick. Um, and I was, it was all around him moving his head off the center line and he didn't do that today, it was, which is fucking great from him because he improved. And I didn't think he would. I didn't think he was good enough to improve that fast, but he did. He stopped moving his head off the center line. And that was where my kick was going to come from. When he moved his head off the line, I was going to crack him. But I, once I stopped feeling overwhelmed and I got myself into my, um, my comfort zone, I, um, I seen that he wasn't moving his head. And I was like, put a right hand on his chin and put him out because he's, he won't take it. Slipped the left, cracked him with the right, and was like, oh, he's still standing. Okay, but he wasn't. He was out, basically. His, eye, he was, his body was trying to stand up. Looked, I was like, just looked, hit him once more. Looked a lot like Connor's finish of Ivan yeah. Butchinger. Yeah, I, I said that earlier on. It looked a lot like it, just backwards from the stance. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the right thing to do. Slip, crack, crack him again, and then say, good night, see you later. And then in the past, when we've spoken to these high-level prospects, like Israel Adesanya comes to mind where he, mm -hmm. he had a list of names. He's like, I'm going to be this guy, and then I'm going to be this guy, and then I'm going to be this guy. Are you that type of fighter that will line up names in his head, or is it just you'll take them one at a time as they're presented to you? No, I mean, every, look, every single fighter on the UFC roster is 
an amazing fighter and they're, they're brilliant at what they do and they all deserve to be here because they've worked their ass off and they've worked to get to this point and they all possess different threats and different challenges and that's why I love this sport because I'm a competitor not a fighter. I don't, this is, I didn't, I, I didn't have to be here. I chose to do the sport because I love fighting. I love, I love hitting people. I love the thrill of competing against another man and proving that I'm better than him. Um, but yeah, it, there's no names. I'm, I'm, Welcome to everyone who wants to fight me. Yes, there's going to be people calling me out. I don't listen to all that shit. I couldn't care what they say. At the end of the day, whoever's name gets sent on a contract, I'll sign it, I'll fight them, and then I'll move one step up the ladder. I'm in no rush. Um, the only person I'd love to fight is Diaz. I'd love to fight Diaz for, just because he's never been stopped. I'm like, shit, I could do that. I could stop Diaz. Um, also, I just think it'd be, for me, it'd be a fucking fun fight. Do you know what I mean? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's great at talking. He's got like he's got the the, the hype of his whole like the like the Nick Diaz army. Do you know what I mean? Like he sees the whole um they've got the whole thing. But yeah, Nate, I I I just love to share the cage with Nate, and it's not a a disrespectful thing. It's more just a I would love to share that cage with him. Well, what about Nate? He has one fight left on his contract. Come on, I'm not gonna sit here and say he's gonna fight me. He's 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 not fighting me. We know that. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, a nice dream. And then historic, last one for me. You said you want to come back in March. Historically, the UFC holds an event right mm -hmm. around St. Patrick's Day. Is that what you have your eyes on? Hey, look, if they want to put me and Connor on a card and take over somewhere, then we can do that. Um, I like fighting in the U.S., do you know what I mean? I'm based in the U.S. now down in Florida. I'm going to go home for the holidays um, and enjoy some time with my missus. I want to get married in January, so I'm probably going to end up doing that. Um, so I, 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 you say it so casually, like probably gonna go get married. Yeah, we, we haven't. You that? We haven't decided a date. We're just gonna go do it. No, we're just gonna go do it. Do we, do we need to decide a date? No, no. Book it. Just go do it. Um, that's what our life's about. We don't plan. We just show up and do things and just take over and be disruptive and yeah. Look at tonight. You know what I mean? Disruptive. That's what I like to be. Um, but yeah, no, just enjoy every second of what I'm doing. Congratulations on your soon-to-be wedding. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Ian, you talked about the Irish charm. Uh -huh. Is that how Connor gets away with everything? <laughs> you need a raise. That's a fucking good question. That's a very good question. That's... A <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, on a serious note, you know, you talked about it, Takeover Part 2. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious. The next, yeah. People are going to say the next Conor McGregor. Mm -hmm. I'm sh it's not a bad spot to be in, but not to be the next Conor McGregor, the next one. Yes. How do you like to stand out to be, you know, Ian Gary, not just obviously like, oh, a million in one comparison? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, the comparisons are obvious. I'm Irish. I talk the talk. I walk the walk. I do perform. I put on a performance like that. I mean, it's uncanny. Like they are clearly there. It's completely obvious. I mean, both born and bred in Dublin. We both talk a lot of shit, and we back it up. I, I get it. But me and Connor are also very different. We our fight styles are different. We're, we're different people. But at the end of the day, we've had the same dream, the same goals, the same aspirations in life and he wanted to be a, ch a UFC champion and he wasn't going to let anything stop him. I have the same dream, the same aspiration. I don't want anything to stop me and I'm willing to do everything to get to that point. So, that's it. Now, obviously, uh, your girlfriend Layla, or sorry, your fiance, fiance Layla, yeah. uh, obviously also did her thing for UFC.com. Mm -hmm. Is this the second coming, like the next Benavidez and Megan Olivia also? <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't like that. No, we're a power couple, right? We're a power couple. End of. That's it. Um, she's my rock. She's she's the brains behind everything. She's um, she takes a lot of stress off my back in regards to interviews and timings, and she is like we we run our own management company, so people think that like she's my manager. She's not. We are. We do things together. We have a, a management company called The Future Group Co. And it's designed around me. And no one's getting a fucking cut of anything that I get. I'm too precious. I, I know what I've got. So me and her, 
you know, she's the brains, she's got all the contacts, I'm the, I'm the, the talent, and we, um, we work it well. So there's a lot of people that think she's my manager, she's not. Does she absolutely do everything she can to help me? Yes, but at the end of the day, we make decisions together on what we think is best for our life and our career, because at the end of the day, this isn't just me involved in this. I mean, she's beside me step by step. She's here at the hotel with me, looking after interviews and telling me I have to be this place, this place, this place, this time. And she's amazing. And I, there's a reason I love her. And like, this is, we didn't get together because she was my manager. We, we ended up doing that together because we're like, right, we're looking good together. We can make shit work. And we did. And we've, we've disrupted the, the game at home in Ireland. I mean, we've got ridiculous, ridiculously lucrative deals in regards to sponsorship. And like, that's why we're blessed. I don't make... Like I make most of my money outside the sport because of a se I've, we have a successful company together and we're just going to keep growing and growing and growing and taking over everything. Disruptive. That's what I said. My last one, and I'll be honest, I'm asking this more for your reaction. You talk <laughs> about what she brings, what you bring. Who brings the looks in the relationship? Me. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, straight down the middle, right over here. Yes, sir. So you told Severe MMA before your mixed martial arts debut that you'd be in the UFC eventually. And mm -hmm. now at the age of 23, you predicted a first round knockout on your UFC, de uh, UFC debut. Was I wrong? You were not. Mm -hmm. My question is, how do you call your shot so clearly? Destiny. I just feel shit and I, I run with it. It's, it's, a, it's a hard one to explain, but there's a... Uh, a massive self-belief and understanding of what I do and I do a lot of things behind the scenes in regards to like dedication, sacrifice, everything to get to where I want to be and I know what I can do in that cage and I know my skill set like I haven't tapped into anywhere near my potential like I'm still so young in this game. When I started I started MMA four years ago like I haven't been doing this for 100 years like I haven't been doing this like Obviously, that's an over-exaggeration, just to clarify before someone says something online and be stupid. But, like, I've only been doing MMA for such a short time, and to be where I am is, is a statement to my hard work, my dedication, everything I do right. And it's just going to grow. My skill set's going to grow. My confidence is going to grow. My understanding of everything that goes on is going to grow, and I'm just going to get better and better and better as time goes on. And, again, the time to beat me is, is just gone. The time to beat me was when I was in that cage. Now you've got less chance to beat me when I get into the cage next time because I'm going to grow. And that when I win that one, the next time after that, you've lost more of an opportunity. And that bar just keeps going down and down and down and down and down. Right. And it, was, it was also a huge weekend for Irish MMA, obviously with the Bellator event back mm -hmm. in Dublin, back home this weekend. Uh, tons of attention on you back home. What's it feel like to be performing on behalf of the Emerald Isle? Uh, look, being here and, and representing my country is phenomenal. It's... It's something that I've dreamed of. It's something like that I've, I, my biggest, my biggest want in my career is to encourage a young child or a young kid, whether it be a female or, or a female or a male, anyone, I don't care who it is, I want them to have, I want them to have the Connor effect. I want what they, Connor had for me, I want to have that for them. So the fact that there could be some, some, someone at home who's, stayed up late at night to watch me fight my UFC debut. The fact that they could be going, one day I want to do that. One day I want to be like Ian Gary. That's my biggest, that's my biggest want in this career. That is like my success, is that in a couple of years, I will see someone be in the position they are that I'm in right now because of me. So that, for people at home to be, to be in that, in, like sitting up watching me, it, it, it's massive to be representing my country because we all stick together and we all, we, like as Connor said before, I'll, I'll keep quoting him because I'm a massive fan. When one goes to war, we all go to war and we're all in this together. We all have a massive hype and it goes for everything, sports, boxing, anything. We all get behind each other. All right, thanks Ian, congratulations. Appreciate it. I'm sorry I take so long to talk because I talk to everyone. One question turns into 45 minute answers, but look, I appreciate everything. Thank you, we will be back and we will do it all over again. Appreciate it.